Hi everyone. So in this video, I'll talk to you about buying on margin or margin trading. Uh, specifically, I'll explain to you what it means by buying stock on the margin. And I'll also share some important details about how margin trading works. And I'll also walk you through a numerical example in Excel that will show you the risks and rewards associated with margin trading. All right, so when you go to a platform like Robinhood or E-Trade to buy stocks, you typically have access to a source of debt financing from your broker, which is called a broker's call loan. And if you take advantage of these loans that essentially you're buying on the margin. So in other words, buying on the margin is just a fancy way of saying that you are borrowing part of the purchase price. In this case, the term margin refers to the portion of the purchase price that is contributed by you, the investor. The rest obviously is borrowed. So percentage margin can be calculated as the value of your equity in relation to the value of the stock that you're buying. And the more that you are putting in yourself and the less you're borrowing, of course, the more will be the margin. All right, so a couple of things to keep in mind here. First, the brokers don't lend you their own money. In fact, they themselves borrow from a bank, usually at a rate that is about 1% higher than that on a treasury bill. And then they lend it to you, of course, at a higher rate. Second, all the securities that you purchase on the margin essentially go into your broker's account, not yours. Basically, the broker holds on to them as collateral so that in case the value of your securities begins to drop, the broker can potentially sell them and at least recover the amount that is owed to them. Third, Federal Reserve Board limits the extent to which the initial purchase of the stock can be funded using margin loans to 50%. What that means is that if you're looking to purchase, say, $10,000 worth of stock, the maximum amount that you can borrow is $5,000, which is 50%. The rest must be yours. And on top of that, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, also called FINRA, requires that the investors have an initial margin of at least $2,000 in their account. So in the example that I just gave you, you would need to have at least $7,000 in your account before you can use $5,000 of that money to make a purchase of $10,000 by borrowing another $5,000. Also note that this initial margin requirement of $2,000 is different for day traders. It turns out it's significantly higher for day traders about $25,000. And finally, once you have purchased the securities, FINRA generally requires a maintenance margin, meaning that the equity in your account must not fall below 25% of the current market value of the securities. Some brokerages uh, often require a larger maintenance margin, about 30% or higher. And if this minimum maintenance requirement is not maintained, you could be subject to what is called a margin call, which is basically an alert from your brokerage firm to increase the equity in your account. Some brokerages may require prompt action, while others may allow you several days to meet that call. And if you don't meet the call, the broker can, as I mentioned before, potentially sell some or all of your securities to recover the amount owed to them. So with that information, let me walk you through an example in Excel that shows you how trading on the margin can influence your investment returns. All right, so let's suppose that there is a stock that is presently trading for $100 per share and you decide to buy 100 shares. So if somebody asks you, what is the total dollar value of the purchase that you're looking to make, you'll say, well, I'm gonna be buying 100 shares at $100 per share, so the total amount that I'll be spending is basically $10,000. Now, the problem is that you don't have $10,000, or maybe you don't want to put in the entire amount yourself. So you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to borrow part of the purchase price from my broker. And let's suppose you decide to borrow $4,000. And let's suppose that the interest rate that you'd have to pay on this loan is say 
9% on an annual basis. If somebody asks you how much is your initial equity investment, you'd say, well, the total purchase price is $10,000, but I am borrowing 4,000 of that. So really what I'm putting in is $6,000. And the initial margin, therefore, is simply how much is it that your equity is worth at the time of the transaction, which is, of course, $6,000 as a fraction of the total value of the stock, which is 10,000. So the initial margin is 60%. So in this table, I want to show you how your equity worth and your margin and your returns would look like if by the end of say one year, the stock price is taking on these different values. For example, what would be the worth of your stock if the share price was $150? Well, I hope you can see that that would simply be equal to 150, which is the price, times the number of shares in the broker's account. So $15,000. In fact, I can copy this cell and paste it through and through to show you what the worth of the investment would be for all these different prices. Now, the important thing here to understand is that while that will be the worth of the stock, that is not the worth of your equity. What I mean by that is that if you decided to sell all of that stock for $15,000 here, all of that money is not going to go to you because you owe $4,000 to your broker. So basically, from this amount, you have to subtract the amount that you owe to the broker to figure out the worth of your equity, which in this case would be $11,000. And again, you can copy this and paste it through and through to figure out what the equity worth would be for all these different stock prices. And so that's what I'm doing over here. Now, based on these numbers, you can actually calculate your margin. Again, remember, what is margin? Margin is simply the worth of your equity as a fraction of the total worth of the stock. In other words, it's simply equal to $11,000 divided by $15,000 over here. So the margin here would be 73.33%. If your broker sees this, they'd be very happy because they know that they are holding on to an asset which is worth 15,000 which is way more than the amount that they've lent to you so they're not worried that they won't get repaid notice that if by the end of the year the price of the stock is lower the margin declines that shouldn't surprise you at a price of $60, for example, you only have a stock that is worth $6,000 and you only have $2,000 worth of equity and the rest is borrowed. In fact, if the price falls to 50, the margin declines to 20%. If the maintenance margin is 30%, then this is where you will get a margin call from your broker. The broker will essentially say, look, there's an asset that I'm holding for you. It's only worth $5,000. You only have $1,000 worth of equity in it. I don't like this. I want you to have a minimum equity here that is 30% of the worth of the assets that I'm going to be holding on to. And if you don't meet that requirement, then I can potentially go and sell these assets and recover the four thousand dollars that is owed to me so no margin call for all these prices and yes to a margin call for all these prices now what i also want to show you is what your returns would look like so by the end of the year your equity is worth eleven thousand dollars and at the beginning of the transaction you only put in six thousand dollars so the quote unquote profit that you made was basically $5,000. Now, be careful because by the end of the year, you will also owe 9% interest on the 4,000 that you borrowed as well. So the total profit will be adjusted for the interest that you will owe to your broker. But then if you take a look at that as a fraction of the total amount that you invested, which is $6,000, the return that you made was about 77.33%. I can actually copy this formula and paste it through and through to figure out what my returns would look like at all these different year-end prices. For comparison purposes, what I want to show you is what your returns would 
have looked like had you not borrowed any money from your broker. You would have invested the full $10,000 yourself and if the stock would have been worth $15,000 by the end of it, your return would simply be equal to 15,000 minus this 10,000 divided by the initial investment of $10,000. In other words, just 50%. Notice that in this case, I am not subtracting any interest that you would have owed on borrowed money because by definition you didn't borrow any money. And if I copy and paste this formula for all these different prices, these are what your returns would look like. And if you compare, what you notice is that with margin trading, your returns are amplified in both directions. In other words, if the stock does really well, you make a lot of return compared to if you had with no debt, but if the stock doesn't do that well, then your negative returns are also amplified. In particular, look at this situation where let's suppose by year end, the stock price remained at $100. Well, if you bought the stock for 100 and later sold for 100 using all your money only, of course, your return would have been zero. But with margin trading, it's actually negative 6%. Why? Well, because by the end of the year, you would still owe interest to your broker on the amount that you borrowed. And so that is what margin trading does. If you're really, really confident that the stock price is going to go up, margin trading can actually amplify your return. A 50% return can actually become a 77% return. But of course, if the stock doesn't do as you thought it would, and actually the stock price declines, even if you don't get a margin call, your negative returns can be far worse than if you had not borrowed any money. And so that is why be very, very careful with buying stock on the margin. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.